And that's how it is when it comes to fitness or anything in life. If you've been doing something for a very long time, the hardest part in trying to build better habits, a better, li better lifestyle, is breaking that habit and that routine that you're used to because our minds love homeostasis. Their mind, our, job, our mind's job is to bring us back to our comfort zone. So as I'm doing these, my mind is saying, nope, this is not comfortable, Bryce. You need to stop. I wanna go back to what I'm used to. I wanna go back to what I'm comfortable. And that is the hardest part about fitness and anything in life is just breaking bad habits that we all get used to, bad routines that we all get used to. But the thing is, the average person will always go back to homeostasis and always go back to their comfort zone. But you already know my motto, don't be average. on YouTube and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm gonna be taking you through my current back day workout. So it is currently July 23rd at 6.20 a.m. I currently weighed in at 198.7. So I'm pretty much the same weight as I was last Saturday. So I'm a little disappointed in that. I'm gonna make some adjustments to my nutrition plan and hopefully get down to maybe 196, 197 by next Saturday. Next Saturday is my graduation party though, so I'm planning on having a cheat meal, possibly a cheat day, so I know that's gonna affect it. And then that next Monday, I'm Cassie and I are taking a little tuna to Disneyland, so that's gonna be another free day. So I know my weight's obviously gonna go up those two days, so I'm planning accordingly and trying to keep it 100% clean this week. That being said, I am back into carb cycling, so I'm doing four low days and now three high days, but I'll do talk about that in a different video because the only thing we're talking about today is how to get a gorilla back. So I woke up at about 3.30 this morning. I did have a actual pre-workout meal, so I'm not working out fasted. I had a bagel, half an apple, because I was out of bananas, some peanut butter, some honey, and then I had four whole eggs with a little bit of cheese. That was my pre-workout meal, and then obviously I had my pre-workout drink, which had some carb powder in it. So I'm standing at about, I wanna say 60, maybe 75 grams of carbs, so I'm feeling pretty good. I did it yesterday, and it was able to fuel my leg workout followed by my long run. So I already did 40 minutes of cardio, I'm not gonna show you guys that. And then when I finish this, I'm gonna go for probably a 40 minute run or a three mile run, somewhere, depending on that. And then once I finish the run, I'll do 30 minutes of walking at an incline for the cardio. But no one cares about cardio, so let's get straight into the back workout. All right, so I'm gonna keep it simple. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with lat pull downs. Now I'm gonna start with lat pull downs, obviously, to warm up my back, warm up my lats, and get the blood pumping. I'm pretty much gonna be doing five sets on everything, and then like I said, I'm gonna keep it very simple. So I'm gonna choose five exercises, pretty much five sets, and then depending on the actual exercise, I'm gonna keep my rep range from 12 to 15, because today's back workout, I am focusing on hypertrophy. So I'm gonna jump into lat pull downs for five sets of five. The first one is obviously gonna be a warm up, and then the second one will get progressively harder, third one being kind of hard, and then the fourth and fifth one are gonna be obviously the, the hardest sets of this movement. So this is movement number one, lat pull down. <laughs> pull down just like any other workout is gonna hand placement is gonna be crucial every set I usually switch my hand placement so if you do it far, some people like to do it farther out some people like to do it closer I vary it so every depending on the set I'll move my hand placement main thing I'm focusing on as I'm doing these is I don't want to really grip the bar and focus on just pulling down with my hands. If you notice when I'm doing it, I'm not even, I'm pretty much just hooked like that. That way I'm really trying to focus on actually pulling down with my lats and activating my lats. I notice with myself, the harder I grip the bar, the less activation I have in my lats. And again, this is a lat pull down, so you should be focused on lat development. these I'm more focusing I'm not focusing on crazy weight anytime I'm focusing on hypertrophy I'm really focusing on actually the movement itself controlling and tempo so I'm not trying to throw it down 
let it go up. I'm not trying to get all crazy with it. I'm really trying to control it all the way down, control it all the way up. I'm not doing like seconds. It's not like I'm doing a three second down, three second up. I'm just mentally being aware of how fast I'm moving it and really trying, like I said, to feel it. To the warm up weight that I use, I usually choose a weight that I could probably get about four to five more reps, but I don't. So, like on that one, I got 15 reps. I probably could have pushed it to 19, but I know that my form would have started getting worse. So, now what I'll probably do, I may throw another 10 on. Thing is, if I throw another 10 on or add more weight, I don't know if I'd be able to get the 15 reps. So, again, I'm really trying to focus on those 15 reps because that's where I notice that I get the best hypertrophy workout. I'm glad I did not increase the weight because when I got to like 13, 14, or 15, those reps were super difficult. That's the thing about time under tension. When you slow it down and really focus on your form, I've already done 60 reps of lat pull downs since that was my fourth set and I've already done 15 reps. So you got a lot of blood pumping to your lats and you definitely feel it. So again, check your ego at the door. Don't go crazy heavy. Mainly focus on getting those 15 clean reps. Nearly. That one felt good. So five sets of 15, my lats are already swollen and filled with blood. So now I'm gonna jump into movement number two. Movement number two, I'm gonna do a cable row, five sets of 15. Now, how I break down my back workout, I usually try to do one exercise lat focused, one like width focused, I guess you could say on back. And then the second exercise, I'll do like thickness. That's where a lot of my rowing comes in and then I alternate. And then usually the last exercise, I superset them. So anytime, if you guys have noticed, I'm usually, I'm a huge believer of supersets just because I'm always on a time crunch, working out at 3.30 in the morning prior to going to work. I have to make it very quick and efficient. However, there are certain times where I really like to focus on the body part, whether it be just a chest focus day, shoulder focus day. And that's really what I'm doing before I get into my training for my next race. So that's why I'm not supersetting today with like biceps like I usually do. So movement number two, I'm gonna jump into. It's gonna be a cable row, five sets of 15. Two sets, the first two sets are gonna be kind of warm up sets. And I'm gonna follow the same idea of set three, four, and five. That's when I actually try to go for strength. Four set, five sets of 15. <laughs> So that weight felt pretty good. I started doing these instead of, this is a Titan lat pull down slash cable combo machine. Instead of just doing it from the floor, I like doing it sitting on a dumbbell. I feel like I, it targets more of my lats, obviously with my the midsection of my back. Now when it comes to these though, just like how I said hand placement was crucial with lat pull downs, you're gonna realize I keep talking about hand placement, especially on back days, just because your back is such a ginormous muscle, you could target different areas. So. If this is your rower that you're using, each set, I'll switch my hand placement. So sometimes I'll hit it right here, sometimes I'll put it all the way to the top, sometimes I'll do it in, even in the middle. I notice that when I do it, and I encourage you to try it, you start feeling it in different parts of your back. So just a little tip for doing cable rows. cable rows there's also different ways you can do the exercise so I know and me personally I used to do it sometimes I still do it but I switch it up there's no right or wrong way of doing it in my eyes it's just however you feel it more so if you notice as I'm doing these my back is pretty much stuck at that degree it's not at 90 degree and I try not to move it so as I get closer to the actual machine I'm not trying to lean forward like I see a lot of people do and I, some, I, I sometimes do it so I'm not saying that but for today I'm, I like to keep it right past 90 degrees. So I'm trying to sit it here now as I'm, so I'll try to keep a slight bend in my back and then only move my arms as opposed to instead of kind of 
bringing it right here, going full extension, bringing it right here. I like to keep it pretty much right past 90, and then, or right below 90, I guess you say, and just keep it nice and controlled the entire way. Give it a try. I feel that I notice it more in my lat, and then also just my, my overall back. So, just a little tip, another tip. reps can really change how a workout feels. So I just started doing this five sets of 15 and 15 reps is no joke because you get to about 10 to 12 reps and you're already feeling it. So those, what I like about the 15 reps is that last three reps on each exercise or each set, you really feel the contraction, the mind muscle connection. So if you are new to working out, make sure you're doing at least, I would say 15 reps to be honest with you because I noticed personally, obviously the more reps you get, the more reps you do, the better mind muscle connection. And if you're just starting out, that is the biggest mistake new lifters make. And me, I made the same ones, is you just move the weight. You pull the weight, you pull the weight, you pull the weight, you lift the weight, you throw the weight, whatever you wanna do. But you're not really focusing on as you're doing it, trying to activate that muscle. The more reps you have on each set, the more mind muscle connection you get. So second exercise is done. I'm definitely feeling in my lats and my back. So now I'm gonna jump into my third exercise. And my third exercise, now I'm going back to a lat focused workout. But this time I'm gonna focus single arm. So I'm gonna do single arm lat pull down. And you pretty much can do this with a lat pull down machine or you could do it with any pulley machine. Um, it all depends on which one you prefer. So five sets of 15 single arm lat pull down. So this exercise is a tricky exercise. So what you wanna do when you do these in order to really feel it in your lat, because again, I'm focusing on lat activation in this one. So if I'm gonna hit my left side first, my right foot I place on the actual bench, and then my left foot I'm actually gonna kind of swing it back. And the reason why is, if, I don't know if you guys can see from the first set, I fully extend, stretch out the lat, and then as I come down, I'm really focusing on pulling with my lat. So right here, I'm pulling with my lat. I can feel my lat activated. I'm pulling, I'm pulling, and I notice as I'm turning, the reason why I'm turning is because you could, I'm at, my whole lat from top to bottom, all the way down right here, is activated. So then I control it going up. I'm still getting that full range of motion. And then I come down, but as I'm coming down, I'm really squeezing and really trying to focus on the squeeze at the bottom. So if you're pulling with your left, your left arm, put your right right leg forward to brace, and then when you switch, if you're pulling with your right arm, I'm gonna put my left foot forward to brace. I have 50 on there right now. It's kind of feeling a little heavy. I wasn't able to get 15. The problem, if I go lighter, this machine, I don't feel like it's working as much. I don't know, it's kind of hard to explain. So for this one, I'm gonna do, keep it at the 50, and just do five sets as many reps as I can. I'm gonna try to shoot for 10 to 12 each side. Oh, and then as for rest period in between, I'm taking a minute in between. Obviously me talking is a little bit longer, but if you're doing this workout yourself, make sure you just set a little timer, 60 seconds, and then get after it. if you guys have noticed it every exercise if I'm feeling like I'm struggling with getting that mind muscle connection I'll touch the muscle so if you notice as I'm doing this since this is kind of a more advanced at least I consider it advanced mind or lat activation workout I like to touch the, the muscle as you're touching it, I don't know what it is about it 
but it sends like a signal from your brain to respond to that area and it helps me actually focus, squeeze, and activate it. So I'll be touching different parts of my lat. If I, as I'm pulling down, I'm trying to touch the lower part, really engage that. As I'm pulling up or extending, I'm touching the upper part. So I call it touch activation. I don't know if that's the scientific term for it, but it works. And again, as I'm going up, you notice when it comes to back and you're using a, a handle of any sort, how you have your hand, like I said, changes how you feel it. So if I'm keeping my hand like this the entire way, pulling down, you're gonna feel it a certain way. As you notice, as I get closer to the top, it's like this. So I'm going forward and then as I'm coming back, my arm starts to twist and I'm really trying to squeeze. So pay attention to my foot placement and then even my body, I'm kind of like, almost like doing a skier, I think it's called, ski jumps or whatever. But my back leg, the leg that is not on the bench is really like twisted all the way. That way I can really get that squeeze. So it's a lot of work, filming and then talking in between each set. Time's already up. I love doing exercises like this. You definitely need to incorporate single arm, single leg, whatever, into your workouts because as you do that, you will find your weaknesses. So like, obviously I'm right hand dominant, so my left, left side of my body always struggles with mind muscle connection. I can't even actually flex my left trap. Fun fact about myself, I call it my Nemo side just because I had surgery on this shoulder. It's weird, I've had surgery on this shoulder twice and I've had knee surgery, so I'm all cockeyed. But anyway, make sure you're doing single arm exercises in your workouts and then also single leg exercises just so you can find your weaknesses and improve on those. So last set, best set, let's get some big lats. Third exercise is done, third movement. Now I'm gonna jump into my fourth movement, which since I just did a lat focus movement, now I'm gonna jump into thickness, or I guess you could say, I'm gonna focus on the thickness of my back. So I'm gonna do another row, again, it's gonna be single arm. Now for this, you have two options. You could either do dumbbell single arm row, or dumbbell row, I guess you could say, or you can do, I could do the cable row again. It all depends on your preference and it all depends on what you're comfortable doing. The dumbbell row is obviously a little bit more difficult because you don't have a machine, it's free weight. There's a lot more muscles engaged in the free weight as opposed to the cable, but it's all preference. Do what you feel you get the best mind-muscle connection with. Today I'm feeling a little frisky, so I'm gonna go dumbbell row. Again, five sets of 15 single arm dumbbell row, and this is movement number four. So you guys are probably looking at my dumbbell row and be like, what are you doing, Bryce? You're doing it wrong. Your leg placement is off, your arm placement, all that stuff. Here's the thing. I saw someone recently, and actually I've seen a couple people do it now, saying this is a better way to do dumbbell row as opposed to the traditional one, which looks like this. Let me see if I can show you guys. So let's get this right here. Okay. You guys may not be able to hear me. I apologize. So traditionally, you do your dumbbell row like this. You row up, I'll do it right here so you can see. So you're rowing up, you have your hand placed and you're rowing up. So this leg, the arm that you're rowing with, your, that's your back leg. If you saw how I did it now, instead of this leg back, this arm rowing, now this leg's forward, this leg's back, and I'm rowing, okay? So, I'm gonna demonstrate with a five pound weight so I don't kill myself. If you guys have been following my channel for a long time, you know I'm a firm believer. If I read something, see something, or I'm told something, I'm gonna try it out and see how it works. I'm not just gonna believe it. I'm not gonna say it's fake. I'm not gonna say it's stupid. I'm gonna try it. 
I've been trying it out twice. I think this is the second workout I've done it in. And I actually do feel a difference than the traditional dumbbell row. However, if you notice as I'm doing it, again with my hand placement and arm placement, my arms kind of, sometimes I'm rowing straight back. Sometimes I'm rowing almost like this and coming around. Sometimes I'm rowing low, like towards my hip area, my waist. And then sometimes I'm rowing a little bit higher towards my chest. I'm just trying to target my entire back in every exercise. Your back is a huge muscle. So there's a lot of different ways you can target it. So that's kind of my thought process. Also for hand placement on the dumbbell, if this is the dumbbell, again, just like the, what I told you guys in the cable row, if your hand's down here, it's gonna feel different than when your hand's at the top or in the middle. So kind of switch up your, your hand placement when you're doing these also to see which one works best for you. And what works best for me may not work best for you. So it's the best thing about the gym is you could just try out different things and really learn what works best for your body. So I'm gonna keep doing my dumbbell row this way. If you don't like it, let me know in the comments below. If you tried it, let me know in the comments below. If you think I'm just a crazy person, let me know in the comments below. crazy how your mind is so much like your body. So one of the reasons why this exercise is so difficult, I've been working out since I was 15 years old. I'm 33 years old, so I've been working out for basically 18 years. I have done dumbbell rows the way I used to do them, the traditional way, I don't know how, how many times. So it is very hard for me, the hardest part, not so much the physical part of this, it's like life is the mental part. The mental part of trying to break a habit that I've been doing for 18 years is way more difficult than the physical aspect. And that's how it is when it comes to fitness or anything in life. If you've been doing something for a very long time, the hardest part in trying to build better habits, a better, li better lifestyle, is breaking that habit and that routine that you're used to because our minds love homeostasis. Their mi our, our mind's job is to bring us back to our comfort zone. So as I'm doing these, my mind is saying, nope, this is not comfortable, Bryce. You need to stop. I wanna go back to what I'm used to. I wanna go back to what I'm comfortable. And that is the hardest part about fitness and anything in life, is just breaking bad habits that we all get used to, bad routines that we all get used to. But the thing is, the average person will always go back to homeostasis and always go back to their comfort zone. But you already know my motto, don't be average. So fourth movement is done. <clears throat> I'm jumping into the fifth and final movement. I call this the fatality movement because it's actually a giant set. So it's three exercise, as many reps as possible for three sets. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do uh, almost as like a narrow lat pull down, I'll show you. So I'm gonna shoot for as many reps as possible on that. Then I'm gonna jump into basically, I don't even know what it's called. If you know what it's called, comment below. So I actually, it looks like I know what I'm talking about. I call it lat flies because I feel like I'm flying with my lats. But basically I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna use this cable machine right here. I'm gonna get the rope and I'm gonna come back and basically just focus on flaring my lats. Nice and controlled, nice mind-muscle connection. So I'm gonna do as many reps as possible on that. And then I'm gonna jump into pull-ups, as many reps as I can do on that. Now for the pull-ups, again, since I'm focusing on hypertrophy, mind-muscle connection, and really that squeeze, I'm not trying to just throw weight around or throw my body around in this sense. So I'm gonna use actually assisted pull-ups. Now I don't have an assisted pull-up machine, so I'm just gonna put a band on my feet and help me really focus on, I'm gonna try and hold for like a second at the top, go all the way down, second at the top, and I'm really just focusing on pumping as much blood into my lats, upper back as I can. So again, three sets, as many reps possible on each exercise. So I'm gonna go to narrow lat pull down, I'm gonna go call it cable flies for back, and then superset with banded pull-ups, as many reps as possible. I'm gonna do three sets of this with a minute exercise in between. So I'm gonna go straight from lat, or pull down to flies to pull-ups, 60 second rest, and then do it again for three rounds. So final set of this 
back workout. Let's get it. giant set absolutely destroys your lats and doing pull-ups at the end sucks because pull-ups suck even assisted pull-ups suck on this you notice I'm using two two handles um, that weight felt a little too light I got like 20 reps I, I, I that's too much I'm not shooting for that I'm really shooting for about 15 reps on each one but I want to do a weight that on the third exercise or the third set I probably won't be able to get 15 on either of them so I'm probably gonna throw a 10 on each side of that and then a 10 on each side of that. By doing that, it's gonna make these even harder, so I'll probably get less on these, but it's okay because that means I'm really working on these ones. And I'm trying to get better at pull-ups. But I have noticed, since I'm a little fluffy right now at 198, as opposed to 190, pull-ups are even worse. So definitely felt better since I increased on these two cable machines. Pull-ups, I only was able to get six. So, but these ones, I definitely felt it more since I increased the weight. So I'm gonna keep this weight. I'll make a note in my journal. Always keep, obviously, your, your weight and your progression. That way you can know how you're feeling week by week and if you're getting stronger. Even though it may not show it in the mirror, like right now, I do not like the way I look in the mirror because when I sit at about 198, I keep all my fat in my midsection in my upper back, and I hate the way I look at 198. Now that I know what I look like at 190, I'm very upset in trying to get down to 190 again. So, I got one more exercise, and then I'm done. I'm sitting at about 58 minutes, so if you're doing this, and you cut out all the, the talking in between, it should only take you about 50 minutes, maybe 45, if you're doing a minute rest in between. So, last set on this fatality, final set for my back workout. Let's get it. is all she wrote for this workout. So that is one of my back workouts that I'm doing this week, or this training block. Um, I'm currently hitting back twice a week because I'm unhappy with how the back looks. So I'm trying to grow it, get that gorilla looking back. So that workout took me an hour and two minutes. I burnt 343 calories, average heart weight 100 beats per minute. So that wraps up this video. I'm not done though, I do have to go do my cardio so I, like I said I'm gonna probably run for 30 minutes come back in walk for 30 minutes at an incline just get 60 minutes of cardio since I am on summer break right now I'm not walking as much throughout the day so I'm still trying to hit about 20,000 steps a day and I've been kind of hitting that I'm usually about 15,000 to 20,000 depending on what I'm doing this past week Cassie and I had a bunch of stuff we had our whole whole floors and everything changed out in our house so we were actually staying at my parents house so just kind of got life routine thrown up in the air. We still got a little bit more we want to do to our house. I'm hoping to get you guys a podcast video this week. Uh, I think I'm just going to pull the trigger and, and do take my own word of advice and stop overthinking things and waiting until things are perfect, meaning my room's all done. I want There's just some a topic that I want to touch on in a video, so I'm probably going to get that out to you guys. I'm going to shoot for this Thursday. If you're watching this video, then it's going to be July 24th, Monday. Because if you're new to the channel, I release videos every Monday and Thursday. Every Monday for sure, I'm trying to get back into the Thursday podcast videos. But everybody struggles. So 
this video is a little bit different than what I'm usually doing. Um, I actually think I like this style a little bit more because I'm really able to break down uh, my thought process in between each exercise as opposed to just telling you guys what I'm gonna do, throwing it together, splicing it and adding some uh, music to the background. Um, I'm better, I think one of my strongest qualities is I feel like I'm really good at communicating. So I feel like I wanna use that strength. I'm not the best at editing, I'm not the best at content creation. I'm not the best at that, I know that, I am, I am aware of that. However, I am pretty good at communicating, so I'm trying to utilize my strength in my, my own YouTube channel, because there's a lot of great YouTube channels out there. There's a lot of people that I follow that I love watching their content, and I think it's very entertaining for different aspects. Sometimes it's the creation sometimes, creation side sometimes, and then sometimes it's actually just the quality of information. Um, I feel like it's, I enjoy doing the quality of information a little bit more than the creative side of the YouTube videos. That's why I like doing the, the podcast because it's me where I could just be raw, communicate with you guys, and that's what I enjoy. So comment below if you liked this style um, because this is probably what I'm gonna be doing um, as we progress. Anytime it's a fitness or a workout related video, it will be like this. And I may even actually start doing my nutritional videos like this too. So let me know below. As always, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you guys like the video. Make sure you share if you're new to the channel and you liked what you saw, subscribe to the channel because we are trying to grow this channel. And as always, I appreciate every single one of you guys, and you guys know the motto, stay happy, stay healthy, and above all, don't be average. I'll catch you guys in the next one.